Okay, um, okay, so what I'm doing now is, you'll have to excuse me, I'm trying to do this around the camera so that I don't get my... Um, hand in the way. Okay. This is a cardboard scriber. Uh, if anybody's interested, it's a Mitutoyo quite gauge okay. see if we can get that ah. put myself a couple of lines on there needs to do a bit the other side So it can give me some indication where I want to taper this tang to. We're back on the missing link. I have a lot to grind out today, so I'm going to try and get uh, some in. But I might go a little bit thinner than that, but that's giving me some reference. Okay, so I'll bring you back when we go over to the machine. Okay, my thoughts on this, um, right, if you want to, taper your tang and you're not sure how thick you want to make the tapered tang, you can scribe the edge and just start tapering like we'll do in a minute on the flat platen. But by doing this groove, it, say, it does save your belts and it makes the process a little bit quicker and it gives you something to aim for. But if you do this groove, it's going to predetermine where your tank. You might want to get to a certain point and think, that's enough, I don't want to taper it no more. Um, but once you put this groove in, you've got no choice but to go down to the groove, obviously, because you're going to go to the edge with it. So if you are just starting, what I would recommend is maybe not to put this groove in. Start tapering the tang and, and, and taper it until you feel comfortable at where and what thickness you would prefer the tang. By doing this, you, you know, you have then got to go grind down to this groove. So sometimes I don't bother with the groove. I'm doing it just to show people uh, how to do it. But a lot of the times I don't bother with the groove. Yes, it uses more belts. Um, and it makes the job a little bit harder, but it allows me to pick how thick or how thin I want my tapered tank. Obviously, when you put the groove in, if you you can always go thinner because you'll grind the groove away. But if for some reason you want your tank a little bit thicker, or you think that looks okay, because a lot of stuff I do, you know, I do it by eye. Uh, you know, what's aesthetically pleasing to me. I'm not too mad on going down too thin on tapered tanks um, because. It's going to give a lot of flex at the end. Yes, it'll balance it, but that's what these holes help do. But also, I find if it's too thin at the end, you could it, it, it can maybe cause it to delaminate because of the little bit of flex because it's not so, so substantial at the end. There's something I'd like to go over in the next week or so about... Um, it's something that I've been researching just lately about how to clean up the, the tangs of knives. And I always thought that a certain product was the way to go. But since I've done this research and, and done a bit of reading about it, I don't think it is. I think there's a better way to clean these handles up to make the epoxy uh, bomb better. But we'll go into that at another time. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll start just, just forming a bit of a channel. I've got my glasses on. Because of what I was going to do. I've got to concentrate now. Not 
No drop done for this. Obviously these are heat treated now. Sorry if my arm gets in the way up. I can't help that. Like I say, if you haven't got a contact wheel, it doesn't matter because I'll take a lot of more tanks without one, without doing this process. That'll do. Give me a little bit of a relief. There's our hollow. I'll turn you off and I'll set it up ready for tape. Right, we'll start tapering the tank. One magnet, one knife. Constantly checking. As you can see, it's already washing that away. What I'll do now is I'll get a marker, I'll be right back. This way we'll be able to see what's happening. You might be able to see a little bit more too. Right, 
slowly walking it up now. Pauses in between, let it cool down. Too hot, that's not. Give it a dip. No rush. There, I need to start favouring. I need to start rocking it that way a little. It's all about the feel. Whatever it's showing you there, tilt it a little bit. I need small adjustment. I mean, I can do this on the surface grinder, but I've always done it this way, I'm too used to doing it. Slowly walking it up now. Starting to go. Put some more pen on. Don't want to come too far past there. Back on. Pen on here to the front. Move the noise down a little. Use my finger at the bottom so I can feel some heat. Really there now, look. Obviously as this gets thinner, I want to be able to fill the heat. That's telling me now, I need to just keep walking it. You need it there now. Because we'll blend this back in a little bit more. Okay. Because we'll blend that, blend that back in now. Okay, there we go. 
that's now right where the handle will be and I'll hand rub that back in we'll blend that back in so it's all the same and that's it that's one side tapered I'll do, I ain't going to bring you through the other side, there's no point in seeing another 7 or 10 minutes of me doing the other side because it's exactly the same. I'll bring you back when I've, I'll come to blending, okay? We start all over again. I hope this is helping. So we're now at the sanding block. And when I finish tapering the tang, You don't want to. You don't want to focus on this. Okay. When I finish tapering the tank, it. There we go. You can see a bit better there now. I measured it. It's great. And all I did is I finished this with a two twenty on the flats so after I finished roughing it with a 30 grit sorry I forgot to tell you what belt I used I just went over with a, a, a 220 grit so that when the lines ended here they'd be more similar to the ones on here and it's going to take me a little bit less time of a clean up so I, I, and it only, you only have to flick over it quite quick so what we'll do now is just add a bit of WD-40 bit of sandpaper I have many different sandpaper blocks and all we're going to do now is go on the knife as normal as if you would be hand sanding and we'll blend those two transitions in because this is going to be a full flat I'm not too worried about how clean all these flats are obviously if there was something here and a blemish here and stuff I'm not bothered because it's going to get ground away because it's a full flat, but if I was doing say a Scandi grind, obviously you would want those flats to be the same. There we go. It's, that's all it takes. It, do, it, it doesn't take a great deal. I'm not too worried here about the wispy bits. You know, I'm not worried about getting like a final finish because I'm, it's, it's going to be a full flat. What I am concerned about is this section here because you will see that section there. Uh, this will destroy the. How I want this to look when all said and when all said and done. Right, that's how it will be. So I'll have my scales to there, and so the only bit that matters to me at this is there. Oh, obviously, I want that really nice and some nice groin lines, some you know hand rub lines in this little section here. That's the only bit that bothers me on this full flat. The same over here. Look, all this here that's there doesn't bother me because it will be ground away being a full flat but if I only had uh, a Scandi grind to do then obviously I would have to address all this as well or if it was a Sabre grind which I'll do you know so just take I mean what I'm saying is don't obsess too much think about what grind you're doing um, it's no good hand rubbing all these out so they look absolutely beautiful when you've got grind it all away is what I'm saying it saves you time at the end of the day and you can move on to your next one okay so I'll do the same on the other side obsess over this for a bit make sure everything's perfect um, I'll probably go over here a bit more probably with a t uh, 220 as well then get it all nice up here 
and then this is ready for grinding. Right, this is a 136. I hope you can see we're going to start doing the flat grind. I always start on the left hand side, it's my weakest side. I know then whatever I want to chase, I can chase from the left hand side and and make them marry. You know, I find it a lot more, you know, it's perfect on the, see if I can bring you down a little bit more, just a tad, maybe. I think that's better, I think. I'll be able to work it out with my right hand side, no problem. You can use uh, a thing to make sure your plunges are equal. You know, sometimes I find it gets in the way. You can use a rest, you can just do it with no rest, you can use a jig, it doesn't matter. You know, how, how you get there, as long as you get there. You know, I've said before, I recommend you having a go at free hand. You know, it opens up a whole world of different grinds and stuff, but it's not the be all and end all. It's not you know, the only way is to grind freehand. That's not the case. You know, it, it just opens up more doors. Yeah, it's a funny subject that one, but... Okay, let's start. Like I say, this is a worn 36, just to get me sort of roughed in, probably be a bit iggledy-piggledy. I just want to create some kind of bevel, so that when I put a 36 on, it doesn't strip it. The belt over a little. It also, by using the worn, the size of worn, it's going to give me a softer transition into my plunges. I'll stay away from where I up here, where I need to be for now, because this is quite close to the scale with the hole as well. The way I've already brought this back, then I can edge my way back up to there. So we'll start. I'm going to cut my knife down a little because I like my punches to be a bit more out of There's the start.
again. So now I'm going to change a bit wider. As soon as you put a fresh belt on, that will even out slightly wide. Up. There we go, even that straight away. Nice now.
Okay, now I'm happy. Fresh off the grinder. All as it should be. I'll now go and do the other side, make a match, and then I'll go through a few grits. And I've done a video on this, and then we'll start looking at the handle and stuff like that. This is the bit that when you've spent, you've gone up through the grits, and you've got this absolutely beautiful. Um, really really fine satin you can see I don't know whether you can see there but uh, see the reflection on my finger and you've gone come on camera it's hard for it to pick it up so I'm getting oil all over my camera okay I mean there's oil all on it now but and it's really 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 fine it doesn't like the reflection so it's horrible you, you spent all that time and sometimes this looks really pretty but uh, starting to hand rub it. it it seems mad putting this paper on here now and, and destroying all that but anyway so start with a bit of WD-40 on this and we'll start to you'll see the scratches <laughs> that's what you want to be seeing really it's hard for it to pick it up but if you've got your grinds really flat you won't see too many the, the scratches will if you've not done your really flat basically this is going to take absolutely ages for you to get your divots out and the stuff See a slight little bit here, but on the old, this won't take too long, really. I, I mean, it's not quick. I mean, it's still going to take me a couple of hours, but uh, it could take hours and hours and hours if you didn't get your knife really flat. I'm also, I went, I think that's a, oh. 120 I'm gonna go up to an 80 so I'll sort okay this is how I get into the plunges rock up into the plunge lift and then out Okay, I can now see, I use to stop the wispies, okay, I use, it's got rubber and a piece of leather on, or you get like fish hooks. I'm just showing you I'm going to take this to a higher grip but just to show you the process just to you know I'm going to bring you up from all the from all through, through all the hand sending now the whips have gone and you can go over to the I use an oil for this it, it stops
There we go. Now there's no wispies at all, or fish hooks, whatever you want to call them. Uh, I don't know if I have to show you this. What I always like to do is get it in a different light. Some reason it's not. Okay, there's the other side not done. And I'll come back over the flats to bring the definition back out in the line a bit. Okay, I need to carry on with this, and then I've got a big uh, camp and field to grind up. Well, I've got. Oh man, a lot to grind out today. Anyway, okay, I should probably upload this now as part of the hand sanding and the tapering of the tang. And then we'll look at next going on to um, sorting the handles out and stuff. Okay, take care all. Bye for now. I'll see you on the next episode.